Going the rounds, I seem to be no problem because in my mind, I can, I can go 10 rounds right now, 12 rounds right now, because um, I, my body and my mind is prepared to go only for a certain limit. If I'm prepared to go three rounds, I can go three rounds perhaps in my mind. I get a little tight only as in the last round a little. And if I have to go 10, you know, perhaps by now I'm a professional. I've been training. My mind is a lot stronger. I can go a strong 10 rounds. It's not as strong, only barely tight in the last round because mostly it's all mental. Because now I'm being a pro, after going four rounds, I wasn't even tired and fighting as an amateur. Only when it comes to the last round, in the last minute or so in the round, I'm breathing he heavy. And now I notice it only has to be mental. It couldn't be physical. I'm capable of doing it within a year and a half. Of winning all three consecutive titles in the heavyweight organization. Well, Floyd Patterson is Floyd Patterson, and Jose Torres is Jose Torres. They, they learn from the same teacher, but you could take 10 Harvard students, and they all learn from the same teacher in the same school, and then when they go to perform in a court as a lawyer, they all have their certain character which they perform under. And I think it's the same way in boxing. You can have the same teacher, but with the character you possess, you always come out to perform different. Um, from a friend, Bobby Stewart, because when I used to be in the city, I used to always get in a lot of trouble. You know, I used to be a, a nuisance. I used to always be corrupt, a little bad kid, mostly chaos and everything. I, used, I was just bad, I guess, and a friend of Cus knew me, and I was in trouble in a, a bad boy's home, and he was a good friend of Cus, and he used to fight under Cus, and he brought me up here, and that's how I met Cus. Um, Never. I, Mike Tyson's career could never be hurt a blemish from any amateur career because the people in general, the people that count, everyone knows what Mike Tyson's about. Mike Tyson's about making exciting fights and pleasing the people, besides being a good fighter himself. And being not being in amateurs, it was disappointing, not going to the Olympics and all, but I think within a few years I'll make up for everything. Um, sparring has been difficult for quite a while. I don't think it's the reason because the fighters are not good enough or anything. They just don't like to come to a camp and train real hard and spar hard. They like to take it easy. They like to beat up on their sparring partners and get the better. But that's forced confidence. I think when the, when they when you know the sparring partner is not giving his all and you're in there just hitting on them and using them as a punching bag, you might as well don't even spar and just go hit the bag. When you're in there with a fighter and both of you are giving your all and you're both good, determined fighters, some people say, well, you, that's fighting in the ring, but that's what, you, that's what it's all about. It's all about fighting in the ring, knowing what you're made of, and then coming to the ring and fight. Because when you're in the ring, the guy's not going to hold back. He's going to fight you. I've kind of worked harder. You know what I mean? It was a situation at TS. Um, you, you, I was became lackadaisical, and I just wanted, you know, I just wanted to go and get it over. I really didn't want to go there. You know, I, mean, I really preferred to stay over here. So I just didn't take care of myself as properly as possible, and still in all, I believe that even though that I didn't, I fight up the par. Still, I should have won that fight because of the situation that happened. But then again, you know what I mean? I never cried with spilled milk. It's over, it's over. I just based my opinion, you know, the situation. I'm not crying over it. That's my opinion. That's what I believe. And that's you know, was a fact because it was witnessed. And so, you just, one of the things, I was sleeping and I got my ass whipped. And it doesn't change me. I'm no different, no less of a person or anything. It's just I got to brush myself off and come back. Can I tell you something? Nobody was trying to change his decision. We were just based on what had happened. Nobody wanted to change the decision. I mean, he had the title. I mean, it's good for him. He deserves the titles. You know what I mean? If he feels he has it. And perhaps, you know what I mean, we can fight again. Personally, because of my association with certain people, I'm never going to get a fair shake. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm never going to get a fair shake. Not at all. I just like to live the way I want to live. I like to do what I want to do. 
And I shouldn't be, you know, um, judged or castrated for that because everyone does. You know, it, it can't be a reason because if if I'm a kid um, um, that doesn't have any way of making it, of being justified in the social status of my peers now that I'm rated, you know, I mean, just stay on, you got to pee on, you stay away. And then when the guy of my status who's not educated, you know, I mean, not from a school of Harvard, Oxford, Yale, Cambridge, you know, I mean, and I can just, I can go places, they go out to be accepted places, they are accepted, you know, what I mean, they, they shun, you know, what I mean, and basically I'm just totally an outspoken guy. You know, what I mean, I say what I want to say and I do what I want to do. And people, they're appalled to that. They articulate for me, you know what I mean? And that's something that I could do very well on my own, you know what I mean? People make their own diagnosis and they say, well, this is what Mike, think, Mike Tyson is thinking. You know I mean, they never, they never ask, and then if they do ask, they, 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 mix it so, they mix it up so much that you would never have a clear communication of what I said, especially if you're not there, you know what I mean? If I can give an interview where there's 100 million people looking, they would have a totally different opinion of me. Well, I believe a lot of people want to see, they want to see me self-destruct. They want to see me one day with handcuffs and walking in the police cars, going to jail, or, or like they, like you seen Marlon Brando's son. People, they love seeing see, look, this is what I told you. I told you he's headed for that. I told you he's headed for that. You know what I mean? But the, the objective, my objective in life, and my sole um, success is that I'm, I'm successful, that I'm not in jail and I'm not, in Brownsville anymore, and I, and I beat all the odds that people say, you're too short to make it, you're never gonna make it, you're not big enough. And you know, and my kid is um, able to, he's, he's born wealthy. You know, people don't wanna see that happen. They like a success story when you're not famous, when you're, when you're down, when I was like 18, 17, they see you coming up from the Olympics and you just turned pro, they love you because they look down at you as two little cockroaches fighting. And they say, wow, that's entertaining. But then when you, when you make it to the level where you can look at them in their eye and you can make your own decision, that's no longer accepted in life from society in general. And they look at you, and before they were saying, you know what I mean, they think of you only as entertainment, you know what I mean? Like so society, like even white corporate America, they'll come to see you fight a white fighter because they don't, they don't respect it as an intellectual sport. They respect it as two guys and it's physically. But once you're at the level where you're challenging intellectually, it's a threat. You know what I mean? And when you're, you're dining and, and you're hanging out at the places they hang out and, you, and you're making it at, at a social status where they could never dream of seeing you at, when they, at first they perceive you as something, as a piece of entertainment. It's one of the books that's on your night table, and the book is called The Maverick Mindset. And it says, the subtext, the journey from fear to freedom. Why is that book appealing to you? Um, it's just overcoming situations that you believe that were uh, unable to be overcome. I, I, that's, what I, that's how I take it. People have so, so many different variations that you can take it. But I always see it as something that, um, that you never, a boundary which you never cross because of that fear factor. And by, fear, by, by overcoming your fear just by crossing it and conquering it, and not just necessarily conquering it, because it's sometimes normally it's just you no, know, it's inconceivable most of the things that we fear. And that so we never really conquer it. Like God is inconceivable. We don't see him, but we believe in it. And just by just crossing the barriers of, of a form of freedom. You know what I believe? I believe if um, we pray five times a day, we try our best to um, do what the Quran or whatever book of religion which you follow do, and there's no God, so what do we have? We have some knee burns, we have some burns on our forehead, we pray, we may, we may starve a little bit during Ramadan and emit some um, calories or some proteins or something, but say there is a God, and then we have paradise. When I talk about God, I get emotional. <laughs> I just get emotional talking about God. When I'm with somebody who really, truly loves God on the level that I love Him and understand Him on the level that I love Him, I feel that way about Him. So, you know, most times we could talk about God and you could vibe with someone when they're really not there. So you just go through the mo motions for your own salvation. You explain to them about Islam and the way of Islam, how it is um, 
wholeheartedly and truthfully. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which there's no compulsion, there's no hatred. It's just it's insane how different um, religion religions have different variations, and we're supposedly be the same under the same God, which is Allah. And it's just um, it's just it's, it's a complex situation we deal when we deal with religion. His salvation, his understanding, he enlightened me. You know, I mean, before I became a Muslim, I've always I've known Muslims all my life. You know what I mean? But I never um, had any inclination of becoming a Muslim because I didn't think their conduct was. I thought it was all hypocritical. But then when you run into people, um, individuality, individuality allows people to act certain ways, and certain people conduct themselves in other ways, and certain people conduct themselves in ways that are different from that. And I was just saying. Um, a Muslim is just your conduct, and when you condu con conduct yourself Islamically, and only God can judge you, basically. You know what I mean? Men judges men's action, God judges your heart. I like to believe so. I like to believe I'm a better individual now. You know I mean, every now and then I go, I go off the handle and I may curse someone out or be upset. Um, but you know, I, I keep my salvation with Allah. Um, I, I try to get, I try to get on my prayers, and I should pray more than I do. And um, instead of five, I should pray like probably three to four times. I should pray the whole five times. Mm -hmm. And I just, um, I just try. You know what I mean? See, so, you know, it's interesting, Mike. You have become conservative over the years. I heard you talking about welfare is a bad thing. Private schools may be a good thing. You know, we, you're concerned about the welfare of your kids. You're concerned about violence. Not that that's a conservative posture, but you've become in your older age, 31, soon to be, you've become a guy who's become a fairly suspicious and sus suspect person about the world around you. You know, you have to because, um, you know, when you think about when people say, well, I want my kids to grow up like me, we're lucky, I'm lucky. My son may not be lucky to survive what I survived. My daughter may not be lucky to survive. I don't want them to be some radical nuts. You know, I don't want them to say, well, we're going to fight for this cause. I want them to say, yes, sir, no, sir, and yes, go to school. And I know people say, you weren't like that, but... You they, were like that. I know, but they may not be lucky <laughs> and be out there in the streets hustling. You know, I'm just so happy that they're in the situation financially, and they got a good... Listen, um, they got a, got a father that cares about them, and they got a mother who's bright and intelligent and knows all... Um, the proper way of taking care of children. And what did I have? I had a mother who was an alcoholic and I had a father who was a pimp, a hustler in the streets. You know what I mean? I don't know if that's gonna make them a better person than I am, but hopefully from their situation, they get a better life than I had. You used to tell me your, your, your dream was to be the champ and to be the greatest champ. Well, I remember I'm talking, that about, dream. I'm talking about big dreams, like after fighting, like after fighting over the hell with the world, I used to live your life, raise your kids. But I don't got no big dreams like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be somebody important and outrage. Nah, man. Me, become, me being champ or me being a fighter is just being one of the guys. You know, that's not nothing serious. People take it more serious than it really is. Life is taken too serious. Life is sometimes, um, shoo. Um, over exaggerated, I think, sometimes. You told USA Today last week that the biggest mistake you've made in your life was to get involved in boxing in the first place. That's hard for me to believe. Now, all the great things that have happened for you, I mean, there's been a lot of, a lot of bad things. More bad than good. But not because of the sport of boxing, not because of what you did in the ring. No, listen, boxing ex ex exposed me to other people in boxing exposed me. Um, the only reason that other people took pot shots at me because people in boxing did. When they saw people in boxing, um, the writers take pot shots, write books, try to get off and exploit me. And inadvertently, they felt that it was okay, they can do it too. So everybody just took shots at me. That's how come a guy like me, what, what chance do I have? I have no chance in this country. I can never have to start a good life, a healthy life in this country. Because I'm, um, it's widespread that I'm just um, a bad apple. Do you have regret, more regrets than you have dreams? Yes. I mean, I'm just happy one fight at a time, you know what I mean? I'm not racing to grab no title. It's one fight at a time and establish my, my, my livelihood more so than just anything else. You know, I'm a human being. I've never, I've never been um, um, perceived as a human being, never. I've never always been perceived as a freak, an animal, some young kid that's the strongest guy in the world or something like that. I've never been really perceived as an animal because I never broke down or cried or showed much emotion about anything that I endeavored. And so I've never really been um, really um, 
perceived as like a human. Because when people speak of me, they don't speak of me as somebody with feelings or emotions or anything. You got four kids, five? Four. Four kids. Four kids, including a brand new baby. Yeah. Four kids, brand new baby. What should they think of their daddy? That, um, That's important, what they think of. No one else, it, it's not important what anyone, it's important what your kids think, what your wife think. What should they think of you? I don't know, they should, um, I, they all have different, my, my wife is too different. I really don't understand, know my wife that will understand her. And I'm sure she doesn't understand me because I'm so wishy-washy sometimes. But I, and some people, um, that's their main objective, to sit down, to study their mate, and to, to know their every move for they can. I don't really care. Either you're with me or you're not. What do your kids talk to you about? What do you huh? think? It's what do you love. Th it's all about love. It's all about kisses, love, taking them to Jeepers, and taking them to little um, restaurants, feeding them, helping them with homework. It's, it's, you're just the daddy today. Yeah, it's real simple. You would hope that they would someday get all the information and still admire you as their father. Because Listen, I don't know about all that stuff, if they're going to admire me or anything. Um, but I know they're going to have the, the, um, the chance to be a good person. They're going to have all the opportunities. You know what I mean? So they're going to make a choice whether they're going to be a bum or a good person. They're going to have the resources. You don't feel you're in financial straits. You don't feel like... <laughs> <laughs> me? I'm That's asking. my biggest problem. I got too much money. I get too, it comes too quick. That's my biggest problem. I wish I had money problems. Like, well, we hear um, all these rumors, oh, he's got to fight because he needs the $50 million to, and that the government's listen, got $30 million dollars on the houses. Listen, can I tell you something? How, many, how much, if I owe people $20 million, if how many times do I have to throw my right hand to get $20 million? The reality, how many times do I have to throw it? Are you saying that you're just a mercenary now for the money? I don't know. There was, a time, there was a time, Mike, where you fought because you loved it. You wanted the title. You did, the money was great. But it really wasn't the motivator. Well, I didn't have four kids and a wife. You know, I mean, I had those responsibilities then. So I could just fight one day after fight, go grab a girl, and just come on, let's go to Bahamas for two weeks and just hang out. And then if I get tired, I said, well, you go back home and then call somebody. You know, you can't do this. What's it like to go to a sheriff's office and to have to register as a sex offender? I don't know. It's just, um, it's just no. Does it demean? Did it feel demeaning no, to you? No, I have no. Um, I don't get embarrassed. I have no dignity in that perspective. Um, like when, we, when I was there, right, um, there's nothing but ladies, like, there's nothing but ladies in the sheriff's office. So the lady said, um, well, what did you get convicted for to be here? Well, I said rape, and I said real loud, and my friend said, no, 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 no. He said, um, sexual assault. And the lady started laughing, I no, that's rape. They said I raped somebody, you know what I mean? But um, after those, all ladies came, hugged me, kissed me, I signed the autograph. Because um, anybody that's a sophisticated adult, and they've seen the situation that happened, you know, that's bullshit. You know what I mean? But you didn't rape her. Listen, I, listen, we're not going to go. I'm not going to touch it too much, but it's just it's so much bullshit. Yeah, I raped her. Give me a break, OK? Remember Ragey Bowl, the movie? Yes. There's that scene with Jake LaMotta. I think it really did happen, but it was in the movie. Robert De Niro, as Jake LaMotta, starts banging his head against the wall. Why, mm -hmm. why, why, why? When he was I... in prison, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever feel that way? I'm too sophisticated to do that. You know, it's just, I'm no fucking brute. You know, just things happen, and I said, well, listen, I screwed up, this happened, and we deal with them. You know, I'm, Custom Model taught me how to be, he was a strong man, I'm strong, and I'm mean. And there's nothing that could break my spirit from that perspective. Nothing's gonna make me get on that. I'm never gonna get on my knees to no one. I was around nine years old, and I was in a reform school in the Bronx. It's located in the Bronx, and it's called Spofford. And um, one day, um, we went there and we saw a movie, and the movie was the greatest. I believe it was 77, 76, the movie appeared. And um, after the movie played, um, Muhammad Ali walked in, and I was just flabbergasted just to look at the champ. It was just, um, and after that day, I said, wow, I'm gonna be just like this man. You know what I mean? And I don't know, um, it's just he just gave me inspiration to accomplish something, to have a goal. He just gave me a goal. And just to just la label him as a boxer is just a, um, is a disjustice because he, um, he motivated people's morale and their sense of belief and moral standards in himself. He's, um, he, was, he would have been a great general, a great leader, a great um, congressman, a spokesman, if not a fighter, but with the same character and personality that he possesses now. He was um, one of those rare, interesting people.
just um, basically that to believe in yourself and to believe in God. And um, he was just, um, he's one of those real, rare, rare fellas. Customato, who's very dear to me, always said, um, I'm never in my lifetime going to see another man like Ali. And he said, I don't think you will either. It's just no one that um, possessed just so much self-confidence and belief in his character that just um, that um, rose to the level and transcend boxing to the level which is never seen before. From somebody that's just um, a great fan of boxing, I see um, from so many different aspects. And I just watched them. I watched the fights from um, 1890s, 1880s, and I just um, I just love the fact just to see how Ali he's just head and shoulders above the rest, just and personality and presence alone, you know. I don't know. I'm sure there always will be somebody to come along to take the imagination away from the audience, but. Um, He'll never be forgotten. He, it's just like when you compare the two, like him and Joe Louis. Joe Louis was a, nation, a national champion. Ali was a world champion. You know what I mean? America um, covered Joe Louis. The world loved Ali. There's no way Ali can go and he's not recognized. Well, I like to get a hold of it, you know, and I like to um, just be prepared when I do get a chance. I just don't want to rush into it. You know, I just, I just don't get, um, I don't um, eat up to the hype. Like, all right, we need Mike to take it back to America. I just, um, I never look at myself as like American. I face, I'm just somebody in this country loving my life, you know, just living. Well, that's, I wouldn't say that. There's so many great fights. You know, there's two guys that are nobody that can get together. The chemistry's right. That's a great fight. There's been so many great fights. But that's a, a fight that um, that will go down in history as um, something that'll never be forgotten, I believe. I had a great deal of respect for Muhammad Ali. I had a great deal of respect. And, um, I've never seen a man of his stature before in my life, and I just, um, just never forgot him. I just thought that's something that I would um, want to do one day, to accomplish the fame and fortune that he accomplished. This is the first time you've sat down for an interview with ESPN in a while. Why now? Why did you want to talk to us? I don't know. Um, you know, I'm going to tell you something, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm crazy, right? Because I'm running around here mad at everybody for no reason. And I guess, um, I don't know, I'm probably just mad at me. If mad, I don't know what was mad You're not about. mad anymore? No, I'm, at least I don't appear to be, no. <laughs> <laughs> you you said, seem happier than you've been in a while. Um, I'm just happy um, that I, I just went to, um, I had a, um, God, I don't know if it was a revolution, but I guess um, some kind of weird revolution. I just started just forming, Bonding a life with myself and with people around me who I feel close and just, life is too short to hold grudges, to be angry at people. And just, I'm as happy as existing. You described yourself a few months ago as very angry. Angry at everyone, hating everyone. What's changed? Um, because I know the problem um, stems basically because of me. And then every time I wanted that problem to end, I could cause it to end. And that's what I do now. I just cause all my ill trouble just, just to disappear. People used to pay to see you fight, and they paid a lot of money to see you fight because they respected your boxing skills, your acumen in the ring, your power. Do you think they're paying that money now for those set of skills, or is it because they think there is the potential for mayhem every time you step in the ring? I don't know what anyone pays to see, but I know when they pay, they pay in abundance. So whatever it is they're looking for, I hope I must be giving it to them because they continue to pay. Do you ever feel, though, that sometimes, I mean, with all the things that have happened, that it feels more like a sideshow than boxing? I don't believe that. Um, if that more of a sideshow, um, I think probably that they believe mostly when I'm outside of the ring and I've given it some um, apocalyptic kind of statements. And other than that, they probably, they, they take, I think they take my performance and my fighting very serious. It's just sometimes, the outcome of my fight, if it may be brutal or else it just may be somewhat um, particular, um, I don't know, but just I'm as happy as 
that, you know what I mean, that I'm the kind of fighter that I can always get a payday and people like to watch me fight. I don't know, I'm mostly all of them in some fashion or another. Because the only thing that we all have, I was explaining, the only thing that we all have in common up there is that we're all with poverty struck. And, you know what I mean? And, um, and you have to know that everybody in that wall, plus myself, right, um, we, all, um, we all earned our money and are living the same way. And I bet you we mostly spend it the same way. We probably conduct ourselves the same way. Um, and it's just so wild that you know, it comes a time in all of our lives, we all go back and say, because I listened to a lot of the interviews, that they could live their life over, they would do this, they would do this, they would do that. A lot of those fighters, like myself, have been involved with people who are older than them and more sophisticated than them when they started fighting, and they've been abused and taken advantage of. And I know a lot of them have to be bitter. They have to grow, grow old being bitter, because I'm just a young boy compared to those guys, even in their prime. I'm probably their age now, right? And I'm just saying to myself, those guys have to be bitter, because I know the stages I went through, dealing with um, shifty managers, shifty promoters, and your shifty people involved in, a, in the whole envelope of boxing. And I don't know. I don't know how they made it. They, they're, more, they're a hell of a men than I were. In 1998, you were evaluated psychologically by doctors at Massachusetts General Hospital. They determined that you were suffering from depression, as you just said, low self-esteem, and that you had problems with anger management. How have you tried to address those problems? Um, that's all they said was wrong with me? I, I don't know if that's all. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, those never, are among the things Well, if that's ba if those are the basic issues that's wrong with Mike Tyson, then I've joined a, 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 a long cast of people, famous and not so famous with that, um, that medical condition. And then if that's the problem with me, then that's basically nothing, because I know everyone Everyone in this room probably at one time or another, probably now, that they never let people know that suffer from those, those symptoms. But I'm not walking around the street, oh, Mike, you're a horrible guy. I'm a winner. Because if I wasn't a winner, your guys wouldn't be here. It's that I'm a fuck up sometimes. But as far as low self-esteem is not being a winner. I have my, my moments of low self-esteem, but I know I'm special, I'm very special. And, you, and by being very special, you can still have low self-esteem. I just know I'm a winner and I can do whatever I want to do. And I'm capable of doing whatever I want to do. It's just sometimes I, I punish myself because I have so much, you know, because I'm so, and, and it seems so bizarre that I say that. It's just that I feel sometimes I feel guilty because I'm, just, I'm, I'm so much of everything. And sometimes I actually, I want to, um, and it's so bizarre I say this to you. I, I sometimes ask that's just part of this illness or depression, that sometimes you just try to be the bad guy because I feel like I don't deserve as much as I have. Because really, when you really look at me, I'm so fortunate, it's not even funny. I know you must have been asked this a million times, but I never heard you answer it. Do you think it would have been different had Cuss been around, and how would it have been different? Yeah, it would have been a lot different, because Cuss, um, I was very um, respectful towards Cuss. And um, until recently, it's, very, it's been difficult for me to be very respectful and be very um, acceptable, accepted anyone else as far as not a role model, but somebody that, you, that would set a good example for me. Because I'm very, um, I don't know, I'm sinister sometimes, and sometimes I, I can be, I don't know, ig irritant. But um, I just try to, after all the mistakes I made in the past, I just try to um, just um, gratify them by just, just living a positive life and try to do the right thing, which is sometimes difficult. But, you know, I made a lot of mistakes when I was a young kid. You know, no one ever says, wow, I'm a 20-year-old kid with a bunch of millions of dollars. No one's ever said, hey, man, I never had anyone say, hey, Mike, well, you need to put your money away, or Mike, um, you have to behave. I never had that. I was just a young kid with a lot of money um, that had to run wild. And I had a lot of bad experience, but um, a lot of those experiences and those learning um, processes, I wouldn't give up for the world. You mentioned to me earlier that you don't even like the guy that you were 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and you think you're still paying for the mistakes you made as a, as, as a younger person and you're a, new, and you're a different person now? Yeah, um, of course, you know, if I'm young, 19 years old and I have a lot of money and I, I come from a, an abrupt environment, of course, um, I'm going I'm I'm, I'm to show my butt off a little, yeah. I'm going to make a fool of myself, which I did. I, I've done a lot, a lot of things I'm not proud of. I think about it now, I even tremble, but it happened. There's nothing you can do about it. 
And, you know, I, I pay for it. Of course I do because I'm, I'm Mike and I come across as being ominous. It's my whole, my, whole, um, my whole aura is ominous. The way I come across my black robes, my black socks, my black shoes. That's everything about me, you know what I mean? And um, people look at that and, they, and they're sometimes intimidated of that. They say I try to intimidate somebody. I must get a good response because I get the response of intimidated people. And when people are intimidated and frightened of you, the first thing they try to do is destroy you and conquer you. And just, but they don't do it by themselves. They do it um, collectively. So that's how come collectively I've always had a, 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 a line of bad stigma. And it's been, and it's been really, um, it's just been pervasive with me being foolish and reckless my whole life as far as my career is concerned. Joe Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Why? Joe Lewis was an um, incredible fighter. He was much smarter than anybody. I think Ali was a better fighter. But I, I think he would have beat Joe Lewis, but I just think Joe, Joe Lewis was the best. Joe Lewis, was just, he was just so pragmatic and just so delivering. And just, just to see him having those guys turn, and he gets turning, he just does it like he's breathing. He's just, he's a master. He, was a master. he had a great teacher. You know, sometimes people, say, yeah, sometimes people say that's not fair because they had great teachers, but how, to, how, um, how can you rate them? If you don't rate them, they can't learn by themselves because at that time, most of the fights, like Dempsey and those guys, they were learning by themselves. They never, no one taught them how to fight. They learned by getting beat up. But Joe Lewis learned. His trainer once said, um, he said, no, Joe Lewis can't beat Jack Johnson, which I think he could have, but he said, Jack Johnson's a manufactured killer. Joe Lu um, he's, he's a natural killer while Joe Lewis is a manufactured killer. So in other words, he had a great, a great trainer who was also a great fighter um, prepare him in the, um, for his life as a, a fighter. And, he, and it just, it was um, tremendous. Joe Lewis is an incredible, incredible, incredible fighter and individual. You told me that you don't believe that people root for you. Did you hear the ovation that you got for Hamed Barrera well, when Buffer introduced me, you? Someone told me that, but I didn't believe it. You got the loudest ovation out of everyone that was introduced and you weren't even there. I don't know why people are attached to me. I, I dig on it though. I'm gonna take advantage. I'm gonna ride it all the way till my wheels fall off. I'm gonna just ride it to the end. I don't know why. You know what I mean? Because I'm a moody cat and sometimes I'm difficult to get along with. But I don't know why everybody just grasp onto me. It's not a phony bone in my body. You know what I mean? Maybe probably when I don't want to get into an altercation, then I, I, I cow tie. But other than that, I'm just as straight as they come. I'm probably too straight. I might say something that's just not classy enough for belonging <laughs> in this particular realm. But you know, I'm just a normal cat. In the boxing realm? What's what's not classy enough for the boxing realm? Man, listen, I done said things that I've been castrated for, man. Come on. See, I was just teasing about Lennox Kid. Lennox Lewis! Man, he don't have no kids. I don't want to eat his kids. Golly, I have kids. I don't want to understand kids. I want to play name association with you. You don't have to answer in one word, but whatever comes to mind. Evander Holyfield. An awesome guy. A real strange guy, a real quiet guy, a real kind guy. And you just want to live his life. You know what I mean? Let him live his life. God damn. So what if you have two or two? Man, we, we're human beings. We're going to screw up, man. Better men than him have made mistakes concerning um, matters of the heart. Custom model. Custom model. God, I don't know. Um, I don't understand why he died so soon. Um, it's like I've been with him since I was 12, 13, and I died in uh, that's like six years. I'm not uh, six years, seven years, but he died. But he died so quick. It happened. Um, the six, seven years it went by so quick, and he died just so rapidly. He just um, he aged old, and um, he has had a lot, to, a lot to teach me. And I really, I really believe that he was real fond of me. It's like that. Um, in the position of actually loving me, and um, it just, um, it sucks. It, you look at him as a father still? Um, no, it's, um, can I can't I quit because I've never been in that relationship. Father, son, shit. Um, I can't do this. I'm talking about somebody that's so close to me and, and, I, and so much involved with boxing. And I never evolved my personal life with my fighting life. I learned that, and it's just that when we talk about them, that's my personal life involved with this bullshit. And it's just, I said, how the hell am I, I got the two? You know, I try not to uh, put the two together, but it's just so hard not to put the two when you mention it. Should I hate Robin Gibbons no, as a boxing hate fan? Him because, you know, Robin Gibbons was married to Mike Tyson, which wasn't a picnic. It was like Friday the 13th, right? So, uh, <laughs> but uh, nah, man, she, um, she wasn't that bad of a person. She, she was married to me. I'm, I'm no angel in this. 
this thing, really just two young kids that shouldn't have been married and was f kind of famous. They just couldn't, shouldn't have been married in the first place. What do you want to tell your fans, the people who still love you, who still will give you the shirt off their back if you saw them in the street? Do you want to tell them anything? Just don't, um, don't give up on Mike, because Mike has got a lot of fight in him. It's just that Mike's the kind of guy that got to bring the passion out. I'm just one of those guys that, that gets, boom, wake up in the instant and come, let's just go fight and win. You know, and then sometimes I could, I could be trained every day and just be not into it and get beat by the, the, the cheapest two dollar whore out there. But that's just how I am, character like that. That's interesting that you put me in the um, league with those um, illustrious fighters, but I've proved since my, my career, I've surpassed them as far as um, my popularity. I'm the biggest fighter in the history of the sport. Um, my, um, if you don't believe it, um, just check the, check the cash register. You know what I mean? It's, it talks for itself. You know what I mean? There's no athlete in the history of the world that ever um, demand and receive the money that I, I received for the smallest amount of work. Why do you think that because is? I'm angelic, but still I'm just scum, but I'm angelic and I, I take the both and I just deal with the both, you know what I mean? Because um, it seems to face, you look at these people, most of these people don't particularly care for me personally, but they must be here because they would love to go to somebody who strokes them and be nice to them and take them to dinner and say, wow, you guys are nice and beg them to write nice about them. But people in that particular position, they. They don't know who their friends are anyway. I know all these guys are not my friends, so I don't care what they say about them. And, and plus, besides that, I'm very consistent in my, I'm very consistent in my, um, my attitude, my assault uh, with the press and with the people in general, as they are consistent with theirs. So um, I believe fair exchange is no robbery. So fuck it. I think the average person believes that I'm a fucking nut and I deserve whatever happened to me. That's what I believe. You know, you don't, you just hear what people say about me. You don't look in their eye and look in the core of them. You don't even know what the, you're a young man and you're very knowledgeable. You know what I mean? You have wisdom, but you really don't know. You haven't been in that, you haven't been in the, the, the cooking pot, so to speak. You know what I mean? You're just a guy that has a lot of knowledge and just can't wait to show everybody how intelligent you are. But you've never really been in, you never really been in the grind. Once you've been in the grind, your knowledge goes to a totally different level. Your wisdom, excuse me, your wisdom goes to a totally different level. Then it goes to knowledge from your experience and knowing what the system is predictable and what it's capable of doing. I'm at the state of the game, win, lose, or draw, you're all gonna eat. You know what I mean? Um, the guys don't care about me. I don't particularly care about you, but your guys, oh, I can't beat you guys, but your guys got a better fuck you hand than I do. Your guys control the media and the press, but um, I'm in the state of my listen. Listen, I'm 36 years old, going to 36. I never dreamed of living this long. I never dreamed of fornicating with as many as beautiful women as I did. I'm having as much money as I did, so if I, and having as beautiful and intelligent kids as I did. So if I was to die tomorrow, I've, I've won. I've won. Mike, that's I've true. won. Sometimes I know I say things and I offend people. I ask this lady um, lewd questions because I'm in a lot of pain too. You know, I'm just in the pain that I'm gonna have for the rest of my life. And, and by some way, a little as possible, I'm trying to um, give some of that pain to y'all. You know, I mean, sometimes you guys you have no pride, so I, it doesn't matter what I say, your guys got, your guys, it doesn't affect you guys because your guys don't care about nothing but money. So every now and then I kick your fucking ass and stomp on you and put some kind of pain, inflict some kind of pain on you because you deserve to feel the pain, somewhat of the pain that I feel. Yeah, I'm pretty much ready, but you know, everything takes time. I've been boxing. Um, I'm, I'm basically the master of coming back after the fight. I get in shape pretty fast. I just need to get my timing down. Sometimes I think it is, but then um, I enjoy getting in shape. I'm pretty vain in that perspective. I love when my body looks in shape. I love when I have the endurance to run seven, eight miles and box 10 rounds. And um, I like staying in shape. I just work like a dog. It's um, hard work. I need to start training smarter and stop training too hard because I break my body down, I break my bones down, I break my feet down, my muscles, my tissue. But I just 
coach, the whole yard, just run the seven miles every day, get up, box, do the hit the mitts for 10 rounds, hit the big bag for eight rounds, just do the running, spar for seven rounds every day. It's kill my body, it's work it out, and it just eventually all comes into place. Well, it's not as hard as I anticipated it would be, but um, I'm just, um, I'm blessed with having a strong body. I'm blessed with not ever being in a situation where I've been to a great deal of um, brutal combat, like most fighters um, have been in. And I just, um, I've just been blessed all around. My physical attributes and my, my, and my endurance to continue to, per to persevere all this time. But um, I just feel good, and I just, I think, um, the fact that I haven't taken a lot of beatings and been into a great deal of war, I think that's, um, that's, that contributes to my, me being able to um, endure the test of time. I want to be champ again. And um, it's just so ironic. I'm just, again, like I said, I'll pray to be the God. I'm just so blessed to be able to, um, 21 years later, people are still interested. I, I have. I've deterred people. I don't know. If, I don't know. Really. It's just I'm just happy to be recognized. I just have. I just never think of myself when um, I'm in denial. I just have, have press just knocking down the door. They just want to be in my presence. They just want to take pictures and want to hear what I have to say. I have nothing to say basically. But um, I don't know. I'm just here. Yeah, I don't know what's the big uh, commotion about Mike Tyson. But I don't know. Well, what do you think it is? I don't know. You I must have, no have some thoughts about it, Mike. Or maybe I manipulated the press so well. But they continue to hang around. You really think it's your manipulation of the press that makes you a fascinating figure even today? I don't know. I'm just bumping off at the good mouth. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm just well, talking. How would you describe your state of mind right now? I'm pretty content. I'm pretty content and happy. Um, and my situation calls for me to be that way. And I'm, I'm just, I'm just um, happy that I'm, I've become mature enough and able to handle the situation that I'm in and just the frame of mind that I'm in. Where have you found this newfound maturity? Oh, it just comes in um, certain stages of your life. And in this stage of my life, I understand that um, this is who I am. You know, a lot of, many people believe that um, if I'm not being a ranting and raving, that Mike is not hungry, he doesn't want to fight anymore. But that's just, um, that's just who I was. I was a young kid, I have to really look at the perspective and think I'm not a young child as far as my conduct is concerned, which I, even though I've been older, and conducted myself as a young child. I mean, it's not that person anymore. I, I guess the thing I'm most curious about, Mike, is where do you find serenity in your life? I don't know. Um, and realizing that I'm not, um, I'm not the only person that's been in a situation. You have to understand, I've lost everything. I, I mean, everything. Anyone I ever cared about, anybody I ever loved, Romantic. I've just lost everything. Money, home. I've lost everything. We have to lose everything. You have to just totally lose it all. Anything. The people who love you just chase them away from being so belligerent and crazy, and just chase them away. And um, you have to lose it all. And I think I don't know. And then it comes to a point in your life you wish you could receive them back. But I guess that's that's part of our growing pain. We lose the people that we love and care about the most in order to start our life off fresh. It's a brand new start. All the trainers you've had over the years, all the different guys, you know, from the very beginning with Cuss and, and Kevin, uh, up now to Jeff and Tom, mm -hmm. who has been the trainer who's been best for you? Well, I can't say all of them had different qualities, you know what I mean? I have more respect um, from Jeff, because Jeff's my friend, he's been my buddy for over 20 years, perhaps probably at least 16 of the 20. Mm -hmm. I didn't think really he could train. I saw him train all the other fighters look great. I'm saying, but damn, that little guy, I, didn't, I really didn't think he could do it. But then I realized, you know, if I put in my 100%, he put in his 100%, and stay respectful, it could be successful. And you see the guys who are holding the titles. What is your opinion of that? I don't them? know. I just saw um, when I see the guys, everybody's using steroids and stuff, that was just really killing boxing. But I noticed everybody went to the steroid meeting except the, um, the Boxing Federation. The boxing's always been an outlaw sport anyway. It's been in the sports business, but it's been outside of the sports business, and no one came representing us. How big a problem has steroids been in boxing? Well, I don't think steroids is, can help much in boxing. I really Why not? don't think, because um, it doesn't, um, 
it doesn't help, it doesn't enhance your skills. I don't care how strong you are. The strongest man never, you notice the strongest man was never the heavyweight champion of the world. The strongest fighter or the strongest man in boxing was never the really heavyweight fight champion of the world. And if he was, he wasn't for long. This is a box of, uh, this is a sport of intelligence, speed, integrity. This is pretty much a noble sport. And the nobleness of it all is the struggle of it all. And, um, and I don't think steroids helps any. Why don't you ever look bad physically? I'm just too vain. <laughs> it's too vain. I, just, you know, I, I don't know. I used to watch the old fighters. I watched guys like Gene Forma, Carmen Basilio, Ray Robinson, all these guys, Kid Chuck. You watch all these guys, right? The Rocky Marfan, you watch these guys. Dick Ty, you watch these guys. Amy Griffin, you look at their bodies. Golly, you say, you sure these guys, they should have used these guys for when they did Michelangelo or David or these guys. They should have used, these guys' bodies are just, there's no athlete that has a body like that. Perfect physique. It's just perfect. And I'm saying, look at these guys. You know what I mean? It's, it's incredible. And I always wanted to be in that, that frame of mind. You look at guys like Mike Weaver, Ken Norton. Golly, forget it. These guys, and you look at their body. Even people in the time, they used to say, wow, this is a man. This is an athlete. This is how an athlete should look. You know what I mean? It's conditioned. You know what I mean? With a, with a great body, but a body that's made to accept punishment. A body that's made to just take a man beating him with a bat. It's, it's just made for to absorb punishment. What did you respect the most about Jack Johnson? How hard do you think he had it as a black champion at that well, time? Well, listen, you guys have to think, this guy was marrying and dating white women, regardless of their status, if they were prostitutes, if they were fast women. People were getting lynched for a reckless eyeball and for looking at them. He was dating them publicly, which I thought was crazy. You know what I mean? So um, he was doing things out in public where people wasn't able to do since in, 19, in the 50s or 60s, basically, in public. And it was just crazy. And he was really brass. He was really somewhat disrespectful in some form, even though, and at this term, he was, he was so much, somewhat disrespectful as well, the way he talked to certain people. But um, I thought he was just an icon of dignity and pride for his time, for the people of now, you know what I mean? The people of now times. People look at him as somebody that fought against the white men, but he wasn't. He wasn't that kind of guy because he wasn't he wasn't for pro black either, Jack Johnson. If anyone knew that, he wasn't pro black. He was just pro being equal. You know what I mean? He didn't believe in marching and he didn't believe in fighting for black he didn't he wasn't for the black cause either, he was for Johnson's cause. He was pretty selfish as well. You know, that's just being very honest. You know, I'm just being honest. I know Jack Johnson, I knew his history. He was pretty selfish as well. He thought more about Jack Johnson. He really did. You know, people talk about the great heavyweight champions and their places in history and what they mean. What is your place in that history of heavyweight champions? I don't know. I just, I'm just happy to be remembered by the people. And I'm going to be, if they think I'm one of the greats, and I'm just happy to be, those all those guys are basically my heroes. So I'm happy to be mentioned in the same breath. That was just my dream. I, was, I never wanted to be better than those guys. I just wanted to be able to be friends, that those guys knew my name and I could shake their hand. They say, hey, Mike, how you doing? And I would say, whoa, Jersey Joe Woodcock knew my name? Wow, that's really crazy. Muhammad Ali, Joe Lewis, I mean, Joe Frazier, they know my name? And I, that was, that, that's, that's a big thing to me. When um, One day I met um, Joey Giardello, and they just came to my training, and I, saw, and I was just um, like, I was like, whoa, that's him? And I, I always read about him and his um, handicapped son, Carmen. I've been reading about him ever since I was a young boy. And I saw him one day and he came in my training camp and I was jumping rope and I, and I, I just couldn't work out. I was just, um, I don't know, I was just, I broke out in hives. And I was just so happy to see him. I was just, wow, and I said, wow, that's Carmen. I just knew his whole life. And, I was, and it was just amazing that he came and saw me. You know what I mean? I just thought that was awesome. And these guys knew my name and that, that was a big, that's better than those guys. That's more important to me, receiving a million dollars. How do you prevent your life from ending as a Greek tragedy? Oh, it's never good. No, I never had a Greek, Greek tragedy. I was always, I probably was on the track, but I've, I've never, nothing tragic about Mike Tyson. My, tra my life was tragic before I got involved with boxing. Living in Brownsville was pretty tragic. That was tragic, but um, I never had no tragedy. I just, what, I had some money, lost some money, I went to prison. That's the basic everyday life. James Keating went to prison. A lot of people went to prison. Mike Milton went to prison. You know, a lot of Jesus Christ went to prison. A lot of people went to prison, but um, that's not the end of their lives. You know what I mean? That's really, really not the end of their life. It's probably the beginning once they come out. Because there's a whole different life then. There's a whole different life that we'll be preparing for once we get out.